Few games find themselves in the category of must-play or genre-defining. Dark Souls spawned a whole genre that now carries its name. Red Dead Redemption 2 was the daddy of story-based open-world developers Rockstar flexing all of their muscles. And Genshin Impact is the absolute goat of wallet-clearing gacha games, parting whales from their cash and putting crustaceans into crippling debt. But sometimes a game can go overlooked, underappreciated, and just generally unloved. Whispered about in the corners of the internet by a small band of loyal, dedicated fans, but just never really given its moment in the sun. Six years later, I've made it my mission to riz up and show some love to a game which I think is the pinnacle of its genre. And that game is Dungreed. Dungreed is a 2D dungeon crawling, side scrolling roguelike. It emphasizes fast and slick movement, combined with a huge variety of weapons and trinkets. The story doesn't f around and thrusts you straight into the action pretty quickly. A sentient dungeon has swallowed a whole village whole, and you must save the villagers from its belly. A series of biomes starting with the proverbial dungeons, and ultimately saving the day. Each villager saved bringing products and services to our hero to help them along their way, delving deeper and deeper into the dungeons and saving more and more of their fellow townsfolk. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty bare bones, which I appreciate as once I'm in a roguelike, what I would describe as roguelike gamer brain sets in. It's hard to disengage and I will skip through dialogue faster than the instructions of an IKEA coffee table in my pursuit of the next gameplay hit. With story out the way, let's box off visuals here. Dungreed isn't overly visually complex, but it does have a charm about it, which is accentuated by a really pleasant soundtrack. I especially love the personification of the dungeon itself. Bright-eyed and wide-mouthed, consuming everything in his way, I find this character especially relatable. The regions and biomes all have their unique style and enemies. There are loads of biomes and the enemies are rarely reshades of previous enemies. They each have their own cast of characters with a range of moves and abilities to fill you with panic each time you step into a new area. The place where Dungreed really shines though is in its gameplay. Combat is fast and frantic. Character movement is solid and not too floaty but not too precise. You have a double jump and a series of dashes. Free is standard, but you may end up with more in a run depending on the items you pick up. There is some platforming here and there, but nothing too challenging. Though the bosses will make you put their levels to good use to avoid their attacks. Mobility is your primary way of avoiding damage. Though you can block passively, but there are no nothing like parries or anything like that to defend yourself. But then we have offense, and oh boy, the weapons. Swords, axes, katanas, bows, crossbows, guns, magic, fists, electric guitars. There are so many weapons giving each run its own unique feel and playstyle. Combine that with dozens and dozens of items to create unique builds and just finding the angle that you want to take a run is super rewarding and really makes you engage with the mechanics of the game. There isn't so many items that you'll never see an item more than once but there's enough that you will regularly find new items and interesting trinkets and new combinations of items. Eventually you might be armed with all legendary weapons and all legendary trinkets and just maxing out everything is the play for you, but until that point you have to pick wisely as your character can only use two weapons at a time and four trinkets at a time. There are also item sets where you can collect one, two, or three, or four items for a set and these unlock powerful new attributes. This is great for when maybe you have a lot of trinket options and weapon options and not too sure about the synergies that you want to go with. You can prioritize these upgrades and guarantee powerful and unique effects. Beyond weapons and items, classes are another way to add variety. There's a whole host of characters to play as, each with their own unique buffs and debuffs, pushing you to embrace different playstyles. The core of Dungreed is so fun, finding ungodly synergies, bouncing off the walls with mad combos, crafting a build and combining it with your own skill to the point where you feel unstoppable, finding new weapons and yearning for the parts to rebuild beloved loadouts from previous runs. I will find you hype katana build.
On top of these elements sits two really unique mechanics which completes Dungreed and makes it, in my opinion, a must play. These two mechanics are tribute and satiation. Sati satiation? Sati the word on screen. Let's deal with the simpler of the two, the tribute system. During a run, you gain a lot of loot. Much of it will not suit your playstyle, or it will be of a lower rarity than your current gear. You have two options of what to do with them. Sell them at the local vendor in each biome, or give them as tribute. The former is basically a way of investing in the current run, by then spending that money on new weapons and trinkets and maybe food from the chef. The latter is you investing in your future runs. Each weapon, depending on its value, adds to the bar at the altar. Then before the next run, or on any future runs as this carries over until used, you can visit the altar, pray there, before your run, and receive a weapon or item based on your current tribute level. This is great as not only does it give you something to do beyond sell your unwanted items, it also gives runs that may feel like a dud a purpose. I had a few runs where I knew I didn't have the juice for the bosses coming up ahead, and instead of giving up, I would focus on the tributes to make sure that my next run was far more profitable. Even going to the merchant to buy new items just to take them immediately to the altar to sacrifice them. I really like this system as it avoids the game needing a complicated progress system. There is a pretty straightforward stat based progress system which caps out at level 30 and it does what it says on the tin. You'll be max level pretty early on. As long as you're making use of the tribute system, you will start your next run stronger. Getting a legendary weapon straight out the gate is so much fun. Carving a bloody path through the early biomes, coming into later stages like a wrecking ball, feels so good and adds to the fun and variety of your different runs. The other mechanic is satiation. I'm gonna keep butchering that word, but I will keep trying, I promise. You might not expect this, but this is essentially your boon mechanic. You start your run with a satiation level of 0 out of 100, or this 100 might be a little bit more depending on your perks and build and stats. Once you find the chef, she'll cook you up food that will give you stat upgrades, which are permanent for that run. These will also satiate you, increasing your satiation level based on the quality of the food you consumed. Satiation then reduces by 4 per room, which means two things. A, you want to find the chef ASAP, as you want to fill up your satiation immediately and then whistle it down as you make your way through the dungeon. You can then revisit the chef ahead of the boss fight and moving on to the next biome. And B, the satiation level may be one of the best areas to focus your limited upgrade options on, as you will always get value from it within a run. I can't think of a roguelike with such an engaging boon or upgrade system. If you know of one, let me know. But usually it's, oh, you cleared this room? Here's a little treat. But here there is an element of strategy to it. One other little tidbit that I appreciate in Dungreed is a quality of life feature. After clearing a room, a little Dungreed dungeon head pops up who will transport you around the level. The map will mark on it items, health, and other places of interest from areas you've already visited. This makes backtracking to pick up saved health, returning to the merchant or chef from the boss store and back again, super convenient. Not a huge thing, but took away the tedious hiking back and forth to rooms that I've already visited. Overall, Dungreed has the perfect blend of variety, strategic planning, tactical execution, and is a masterclass in game design. Everything here serves a purpose to bring either fun, variety, or efficiency to your gameplay. In my humble opinion, Dungreed doesn't get the recognition it deserves, and maybe after the Hades games and Death Must Die is one of my favorite roguelikes of all time. It really gets the combination game, that special source that makes roguelikes so addictive and keeps me coming back for more. If I have a spare half an hour or so, it's one of the games that I'll always reach for. And with the team's next game, Sephiria, filled with the same game design philosophies, I'm so excited to have the two games there at the same time, and I know I'll always have a good time with each and every time I pick one of them up. This game's just special, man. I don't know how much more I can say. 
If it sounds like your jam, check it out and let me know how you get on. But maybe you've already been swallowed by Dungreed. And if so, let me know what your favorite weapon or build is in the comments down below. Do like and subscribe for more roguelike content. I've been kind of experimenting with different video types from individual review videos to multiple game demo videos in the roguelike genre. So if that sounds like your jam, if that sounds like fun, stick around and check them out. Thank you for watching while I talk about a game I really love. I'll see you next time. Farewell for now.